Welcome artists to Monet Cafe Studio. Did you know you can turn pastels into paint? Many artists aren't aware that yes, this dry medium can be applied and liquefied to turn into paint. Now there are many different advantages to using a technique like this and liquefying your pastels. I'm gonna teach you that technique right now and show you how to get beautiful results. And here are the supplies you'll need. A water-friendly pastel surface. I'm using Fisher 400. It's very similar to UART pastel paper, and it's water-friendly. I'm also using a grayscale marker. Now, you don't have to use a marker. You could use a pencil. Charcoal pencil would work just fine. Also, some pastels. This is a quick shot of my pastels. I talk more about them on my Patreon version of this lesson. And you're going to need a little jar and some isopropyl alcohol. This is the kind you buy in drugstores. I use 70% and I mix it with water. I'll explain that later. Now, you're also going to need some stiff bristle brushes, brushes with some texture, and I also like to use a fairly large brush. By the way, my painting surface is 20 inches by 16. You don't have to work this large. I'm using a beautiful reference image from unsplash.com. It's a great site for copyright-free reference images, and I'm using this image mostly just for inspiration. This is going to be a rather intuitive painting. I'm just really interpreting the scene and just having a lot of expressive fun with this piece. I've been using a marker lately prior to starting a pastel painting, especially one that's going to have a water application or an alcohol application because these markers don't bleed as much as, say, a charcoal pencil would. But what I'm doing here is getting very expressive. Rather than sticking strictly to this reference image, I wanted my poppies to have life and energy, and I want some of them to be much larger and reaching above the horizon line. So I had me on some, I think it was some praise and worship music and I was just having fun. If you're a beginner artist, some of this might take some time. Feel free to recreate from mine and uh, it does get better the more you do it. I got my clouds to have a lot of energy as well rather than just going straight across the horizon line like that. So you'll see it develop. Now these are the pastels that I chose to use for the scene and again if you're a patron of mine I talk a little bit more about these as I paint. If you don't know what a patron is, it's my Patreon page. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. It's only $5 a month. But right now what I'm doing is I am just taking a dark, it's like a dark blue pastel. And uh, now I have kind of a neutral green pastel. And I'm just working around my flowers, painting negatively around my flowers. I know my foreground is going to have some dark elements. And I use some warmer greens. Um, these are warmer because the sunlight hits more on the tops of the grasses. I know I've got some grasses that are buried. Um, the cooler green is because some grasses are a little bit more in shadow. And now I'm taking another green. Value gets lighter as it goes into the distance. So I'm gradually getting lighter as I move further back into this field and my strokes are getting more horizontal. Now here's that isopropyl alcohol. I use 70% and sometimes I use it full strength, but for this I used it about 60% of alcohol and 40% of water. And that's because I was running low on my alcohol. Now here's my little stiff bristle brush. I'll have links to all these products in the description of the video. And I have a more sped up version here on the Monet Cafe channel than I do on my Patreon page uh, and less commentary, but the sped up version actually allows you to see kind of how this alcohol is dripping. And just like I was saying, the title of this video, this pastel dry medium is turning into paint. It's You can see it, it's just dripping. And when it dries, it sets itself into the pastel surface. You can see it dries even lighter. Now I'm doing this in stages and I've been enjoying this technique lately because I find it helps me to keep colors less muddied, dripping all into each other. So as you can see, I did the field in one stage or setting, then I did the tree line and vertical elements are almost always darker in a landscape. And so I did my alcohol application, I blew it dry. I let the first uh, layer dry too as well. Now I'm getting my sky 
uh, negatively painting around my clouds. And I'm going to then liquefy this third stage of turning these pastels into paint. Notice like the upper part of the sky that I haven't liquefied yet. You see how textural it is? But as soon as I add the alcohol, it blends all those colors together. So again, multiple advantages to this technique. I'll talk a little bit more about that after I start sharing about these flowers. Notice I left my flower uh, shapes uh, white and I'm just in the clouds also, or it's a cream color actually, this surface. And I'm just getting some gestural marks in for these poppies. Again, I'm looking at the reference image maybe for an idea of these poppy flowers and their shapes, but I didn't feel the reference image was something that I had to feel bound by. So I'm really being interpretive here. And one thing you want to do with flowers is not have them all the same. Uh, they turn in different directions. Some of them you're going to see the centers in, in real life. So, you know, obviously some of them are turned towards you. Some are turned away. Some are turned down. Some are um, newer blooms. Some are older blooms. So make sure you have some variety in your flower shapes. I wanted some of them to be larger, uh, more in the foreground. And, and many of these or some of these are going to be buried. You know, all these flowers aren't going to be just pasted on top of the grasses. Often you see, oh, ignore that gray haired lady right there. <laughs> Often um, flowers are buried. You're looking through a tangle of grasses. So I'm just getting in, uh, I'm looking at my reference image now to get an idea of a couple of those random shapes. And now as promised, let me tell you what it is to become a patron. You get the full video content, longer videos, more commentary, slower speeds, lots of product information. And you get to become part of this beautiful family of artists. And I get to see your work. I love that. All for only $5 a month and you can cancel at any time. All right, let's get Get back to this. I loved using some of these dark Terry Ludwig pastels. Again, if you're a patron of mine, I share my my product numbers of some of these pastels I use. And uh, I'm getting in the darker purples a little more in the foreground. Again, they're going to be more uh, in the shadow, buried, and uh, the sun's not hitting them as much. So um, these gorgeous reds are more, most of them are more Terry Ludwig pastels. I already had someone ask about these reds from an Instagram post that I shared with a little clip of this. And uh, Terry Ludwig definitely makes some gorgeous reds. Now, this red is a little cooler. A cooler red is pink. Um, and it has less yellow in it. And why would I use these colors or this color as I'm receding into the distance? Well, color temperature, things typically cool off as they go into the distance. Three things, they get lighter, and well, uh, more than three. They get lighter in value, they get cooler in color temperature, they get more neutral usually, not as punchy in color, and they get less detail, they get smaller, lots of things. But these simple rules are definitely ones that you can learn, and they're not that hard, fortunately. Uh, it seems all overwhelming if you're a beginner artist, but um, if I can do it, I always say anybody can do it. I had no idea what I was doing when I got started <laughs> with pastel painting. Um, I like to get in some purples in the shadows. Some of these might be flowers. Yeah, I'm making some of them flowers, adding that pretty, uh, that's like a magenta brown from the Terry Ludwig um, pastels I was mentioning. Now I'm reinforcing this tree shape. Right now it looks kind of like a blob. And um, they're, the ones that are darker are the closer trees. I'm going to lighten up that second band of trees that are further away uh, in a bit. But uh, I'm giving an idea of either some distant trees further away. This is this blue, uh, turquoise blue I'm adding. Or they could be mountains. But I realized they were really close to the color of the sky. So uh, I add a little bit more of this blue. But then I come back and decide to give it a little, see, i just saying, too close to the sky color with my quick finger there. So I'm adding a little bit of uh, purplish lavender and uh, that makes them feel a bit more like mountains far away. Now these trees are not going to stay blobs but I like to go ahead and get my darks in and I like to add a few different darks. I had a blue and then kind of a dark green and now I'm giving some light. I'm working dark to light. The sunlight is hitting these trees and the sunlight source by the way is the upper right. So that's why some of 
my highlights you'll see are um, kind of from in that angle. And just keep in mind, like a tree, there's different levels of the trees, different branches and leaves that are sticking out in like clusters. So some of them get more light. Now, these clouds, right now they just look like big, um, almost like blobs uh, in the sky. But clouds, if you're a cloud challenged, clouds, think of them just like any other three-dimensional object. We think of them as like, oh, they're like wispy, they're like smoke. Well, they really behave the same as other objects do with light. So I know my light source is from the upper right, and uh, they're going to get more light on the upper right portion of the clouds. And I'll continue to develop them as I go along. You may notice I like to work the hole in a painting. I feel like it keeps my painting more fresh. I don't get bound up by getting too carried away with any one area and I think it feels more lively and connected at the end of the painting. Now this is a little piece of pipe foam insulation. You can get it at any hardware store. I just cut off a little piece. You can wash them and reuse them and I'm using it to blend the clouds. I don't blend a lot in my paintings but sometimes the sky especially with clouds I like to do a little blending. I was wiping it off in between moving from one color to another. I was just reshaping that mountain back there. It was a little bit too pointed. And that's a great thing with pastels, the layering ability. And now I'm lightening some of those distant trees, giving a few more of these, that pretty cool green highlights on the trees. And we're starting to get the feel of a distant landscape now. Now, let me talk a little bit more as I'm adding um, more of these grass shapes and colors. Oh, I get really fun with color with this one. But let me talk more about the advantages of turning your pastels into paint. I mentioned one of them is that it takes away that textural look. You're covering your surface and really getting rid of all that light color of the paper showing through. Uh, advantage number two is that it sets your pastels into the surface, meaning um, they, they really become almost like part of the surface. They're not gonna move around as much. You can't really blend them after that. You may be aware if you've used sanded pastel papers very much that you have a layering ability. You have this ability to layer pastels on top of each other. If you've ever tried using pastels on like uh, copy paper or regular paper. Um, you can't get many layers. It just kind of falls right off. So that's the advantage of these pastel papers. But it has limitations to how many layers you can get. When you liquefy the pastels, turn them into paint, as I say, um, you gain a layer back. It's They're not taking up the tooth of the paper when you wet them and turn them into paint. And by the way, you can use just water. You don't have to use alcohol to do the process with turning them into paint. I like alcohol, especially when I'm Doing a video because it dries faster. Um, but if you don't like the smell of alcohol or whatever, you can um, use water. By the way, I was using my right hand there. I'm primarily left-handed. Uh, any other lefties out there? Um, left-handed people learn to be pretty ambidextrous, I've found. When I was a kid, they didn't have any right-handed scissors. and But I recommend painting with your non-dominant hand because your marks will be different and they'll be more gestural and fresh. So I, as you can see, I added some darks into some of those flower centers. Um, now I'm using some greens. It's from a, a sweet little set of six pastels made by Sennelier. They come in different color families. I'm going to do a tutorial on these. I bought about four or five different little color families of these six um, pastel sets and I love Sennelier pastels. They are so beautiful and uh, they're kind of affordable so that's good news. They're a great quality pastel too. So here I am getting crazy with color. Like I said I just wanted to have fun. Sometimes by the end of the month I've been doing a certain theme so much that I just kind of have a blast and paint and just get crazy. Um, so now I'm starting to add some more of the the lighter values on the clouds. Again, think of them like any other three-dimensional shape. Some uh, parts of the clouds have a little bit darker elements or values. Some have middle values and some have lighter values. I put in some of that turquoise into the sky for some movement and gesture. And uh, I am going to have to eventually add some stems to these flowers that's coming. But I'm glazing some of these reds almost like a blanket in the distance to give that feeling like there might be some uh, poppies. Well, there probably would be in a poppy field like this, some flowers way into the distance. So uh, it's feeling really fun and colorful, maybe a little crazy. I'm adding a little bit more light green um, to some of the trees. And now I'm getting gestural and fun. Often I like to take a 
pastel and um, give little really fun um, edges to my um, poppies or my flowers. Here I'm using a Prismacolor new pastel. They're harder. They're little sticks of pastel or long skinny sticks and they're great for getting stems in and making some tall or um, thinner grasses. Uh, I try not to overdo this with the grasses. Sometimes I do, um, but this one was really fun. Oh, and I loved adding some turquoise into the grasses. See, that's the neat thing about being an artist. We're just breaking out our artistic licenses and having some fun uh, don't get so stuffy about painting that you forget to have fun be a kid again so here's the final loose free colorful interpretive and I highly recommend trying this technique of turning your pastels into paint for the initial layers I think you're gonna really enjoy it and again, if you would like this full lesson, consider becoming a patron of mine. I have hundreds of lessons on my Patreon page with lots more content, but also please like this video, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. All right, everyone, God bless and happy painting.